Hey, Wine Dude here. I'm here at Sunstone Winery, looking for owner and winemaker, Brian Rice. He owns two wineries, Sunstone and Artiste. One organic completely, and one organically artistic. So come with me and check them out. This is for you. Hey, Wine Dude. Whoa, it's buying rice. Hey. Pouring some wine. This is uh, Sunstone Arrows. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Are you can have some too? Absolutely. Always a pleasure to join you with a glass of wine, my friend. Mmm. My God, that's good. So, what are you doing here? I live here. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> What am I doing here? <laughs> this is a nice place. I'm actually standing in the villa above Sunstone Winery. And this is Bayan Rice. He is Sunstone. And I'm talking to Bayan here because he owns two wineries. He owns Sunstone and he owns Artiste. And they're two completely different wineries. Am I right? Couldn't be more different. And tell me about, you know, why are these so different? What is your history? How did you get into this in the first place? I was very blessed to have been born into the industry. Uh, in fact, my great-great-grandfather grew grapes in Napa in the 1890s. And so it's been a, a long lineage of grape growers. In 1990, we planted the vineyard here at Sunstone in Santa Inez, which is Santa Barbara County. Um, and we planted 25 acres, and when I say we, it was my parents, my two sisters, my aunt and uncle, and my grandfather, and my girlfriend at the time, who's now my wife. And we were all part of the process of building a vineyard. And we really didn't have any winemaking experience at all. Uh, so we were, it was kind of trial by fire, like learn as you go. And we essentially learned by practicing and, and hiring people who knew it better than we did. Um, and along the way, uh, I got the bug for getting into the cellar and actually crushing the fruit and the, the science of making the wine in the cellar, as opposed to being in the, in the vineyard and learning the, the uh, viticulture, which is a totally different uh, area in the wine industry. I, I love farming, I think it's fascinating, but I don't have the patience. So I hire people much better than me in the farming world. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> um, but I love, uh, I loved, uh, in 1997, that was my first vintage, uh, making my own wines under the Sunstone label, and I just loved the process of fermenting the grapes and, and taking that, that precious gift that you get once a year, every October and November, and converting it into wine, and you only get one chance to do it right, and that's the beauty of wine. Yeah, but you know what? You do it so well. Man. But to answer your question, uh, Artiste, uh, by, uh, con by contrast, is a blending project. So Artiste is all about blending wines. And it was born out of, out of Sunstone. It, it got its roots here. Um, and I started making uh, blends probably around 97, 98, 99 that were very appealing to people like Eros, which is a Bordeaux blend. And I married it with art. And for the first time, I realized that there was an opportunity there to work with artists to create wine and get inspiration from those artists to, to come up with a blend that I come up with. And so it's really a collaboration between artist and winemaker. So how, how does it work? Do you hire the artist ahead of time and show them your wine? Or do you say, okay, you know, give me a, some kind of concept of what you're going to paint and I will fit the wine to that. Usually winemakers will make the wine and then they'll go find a pretty label, a pretty artwork and put it on the bottle. That's the typical way it's done. Mm -hmm. But for, for the approach that I wanted to make uh, take with this is I really wanted to be surprised myself. I wanted the art to, to drive the recipe, the wine that ended up in the bottle. And so I commission artists and uh, select pieces of work that are beautiful, that tie, tie in nicely with our portfolio. And then the, the art itself, the color usage, the balance, the composition, uh, the story behind the piece, all of that parlays back into the, the cellar and becomes my recipe. Uh, and so I never know really what's going to be next. The sad part about that is once you release a blend for a piece of artwork, 
you can never re replicate it. It's a rep it's it, it's impossible. One of kind. Yeah. And once it's gone, it's gone forever. You know. Uh, and it's kind of like your children. You know, once they're out the door, that's it. Um, and I, it's it's a it's a love. It's a passion. I love blending wine. I love working with artists. Um, but it's also sad to see them go. Yeah, but you know what? It's great though being able to have that boutique element to all of those wines at Artiste. You know. But now here, Sunstone, this is what started it all, right? Yeah. I know it's very different than what you do over at Artiste. So can you kind of go over that? Mm -hmm. Tell me what that's about. Yeah, so I kind of um, jumped out of Sunstone in 2002 to start Artiste and I, I really enjoyed it because I could go off and create these really different wines, very dramatically, somewhat unorthodox styles, uh, non-vintage, non-varietal, non-appellation. It was really just red wine or white wine, um, and, and I liked that. Uh, but coming back to Sunstone in 2011, um, I, I found the, the challenge now is making varietally distinct wines that really have, that capture the terroir, uh, the place in the bottle for customers and for myself. Um, and every year is different, so you're, you're captured, it's like a time capsule. You know, wine is basically a place in time. So when you pick the grapes off the vine, that's it. What you capture at that moment is that place in time. And, and so your minimal intervention as a winemaker is key. You, you don't want to mess it up. You want to capture it, preserve it, put it in the bottle, and, and hopefully it'll turn out beautiful. <laughs> but the, the risk is, is mother nature. You know, you can't control nature. And if you're not blending, or manipulating the wine somehow, you're stuck with what you have. So the challenge is how do you make great wine consistently every year from that same vineyard, that same varietal, and bottle it with integrity? It's, it's challenging, but it's a very different approach. It's minimal intervention, right? Uh, single vineyard, single varietal, single appellation versus artiste which is all blends, no rules. Way cool, way cool. Now, I know that that's all blending, so where do the grapes come from? Where do you get them from mm -hmm. for the Artiste wines? For Artiste, there's no real um, limitations. I've gone as far as, far as Oregon, East Willamette Valley, uh, as far south as Temecula. So there's no, the palate is, is the West Coast. So it's all California. Oregon, well, cool. well, I've, I've looked at Washington, but we've really, the palette is, is, is Santa Barbara County primarily, mm -hmm. but um, there are certain varietals you just can't grow here. Right. Uh, Zinfandel, for instance, you don't see much of any of the Zinfandels in Santa Barbara County. So Russian River makes nice Zinfandels. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right? So I can go work with fruit from there. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the beauty of it. It's a, it's a very, California is a cornucopia, an incredible palette for a winemaker like myself who really has no rules to be able to go out and source what I call my paint from different areas that where they make the best Cabernet in Napa, for instance, or the best Zinfandel in Russian River. So I can go pick and choose and assemble the blend based on the best from each region. That's very cool. It's a lot of fun, too. Yeah. Well, it's like uh, when I met you, right? I met you the first time from this artist who ended up being your manager, Christina Lacasio, um, and... At the time, she was explaining to me that she painted with wine. So a bunch of your labels on different kinds of wines are her actual paintings that she discovered works with her wine palette, I guess what you'd say. Mm -hmm. It's almost like your, your wines for artistes, you do the pairing with the artists. It's like pairing with food, you know, exactly. or pairing with music or whatever exactly. you, you know, they all kind of intertwine because it's all artistic. Mm -hmm. So, um, at this winery, at Sunstone, um, it's an organic winery, yeah? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're the longest running certified organic vineyard in the county of Santa Barbara. Uh, my, my mother was a green thumb and a diehard environmentalist. In fact, this entire villa was made with reclaimed materials from France. All really? brought over, uh, the French thought that it was garbage, you know? Uh, but it ended up in the late 90s that these materials, which we brought over in 40 containers, uh, they just wanted to get it out of out of the way, uh, but but now you know people are clamoring over this this type of material and you can't even find it anymore. But my mother had such a vision with with regard to environment and reusing you know renewable resources and so forth 
And so when we planted our vineyard in 1990, we knew from day one we were going to be certified organic, or organic with or without the certification. So it was a family value, it has always been family value, it's never been a marketing thing for us. In fact, we don't even put it on the bottle. So for us it's about knowing we live in a toxin-free environment and that the vines have their own natural health and resilience to pests. Um, we have a little ecosystem here. It's all about biodiversity, you know, you, you want to have a lot of different types of trees and plants to create a, a very biodiverse place so that the vines have their own um, eco, eco balance. Right, right. It's all about balance. So we planted them in 90, so the, the vines are 25 years old and still producing, I think, world class wines, very healthy. Um, and we, so for 25 years, we've never sprayed an ounce of pesticide or herbicide or mildicide or fungicide. Really? Wow. That's cool. So that helps people like with allergies also, right? They have certain allergies to these different types of... Yeah, the, the chemicals are really... Nobody really knows what kind of impact they're having on people's bodies. Um, they know with kids that it causes learning disabilities, for instance. Uh, farmers who, who have families, they go home after working in a vineyard or, or other agricultural crop and the herbicides and pesticides get on their clothes and then that mixes with the children's clothes. Um, in, in the laundry, right? And then the, they've proven that those chemicals uh, are more, have more impact on kids than adults. And so we, we really believe in you know, farmer worker health, everyone that's on this property. We have 40,000 visitors a year coming through here. So it's about creating a toxin-free zone and knowing that you know, like an organic uh, tomato tastes better than a, a chemically farmed tomato. Mm -hmm. You can taste the difference when you go to farmer's oh, sure, markets. Sure. So we believe the same is true with, with grapes. So wait, let me get this straight. You can come to Sunstone, right, in a toxin-free environment, and that means you could drink more wine than, you know, you would normally, right? Uh, <laughs> there is, you know, this thing called alcohol in there. So, you know, it depends on how much we're talking about. But you'll but, be clean. Yes, See, that's the yes, whole point. Yes. I know it works for me. <laughs> <Salute>. <laughs> God, this stuff's good. What is this? Eros. So Eros is the, the god of love. We named it after that because we, we release this every Valentine's Day. Oh, okay. And it's a Bordeaux blend, Merlot, Cab Franc, Cabernet Sauvignon. All, all estate grown right here on the property. Um, blend is different every year. So it's all done to taste. It's just like a chef mixes a sauce. Um, very small production, usually in the two to 400 case category. Uh, so it's a luxury product, all hand dipped with wax, um, very Bordeaux. I would say if we were to stylistically give it an example of what it uh, is stylized after, you would say Pomerol, Saint-Emilion, the, the right, right bank of Bordeaux, mm -hmm. which is primarily Merlot producers. Some of the most expensive wines in the world come from there. Um, and But that's the type of soil and climate we have here, and that's why we can get away with producing Bordeaux varieties in this cooler region of Santa Barbara. But only little bits, mm -hmm. right? The figures, because that's my favorite wine you have here in Sunstone. That's pretty funny. Um, <clears throat> anything else we should know about the two wineries? I mean, basically you have an organic winery, Sunstone, mm -hmm. and at that organic winery, um, if you can see the background here, everything here is the French chateau type. Mm -hmm. And actually this stuff came from France. Um, it's a nice size winery, beautiful, um, and then you've got Artiste, which is just amazing. Um, you walk inside, you can paint a painting, right? You have all these different wines, which with art just everywhere. It's like an art exploded <laughs> inside is. of this winery. It is. You know how some bars people put dollars and things and, and whatever up on the ceiling? Uh, our version of that is art. So people come in and they paint, whether they sketch it in a, in a book or and tear out a page or they'll paint with tempered paint on, on paper or even canvas. And then if we like it, of course, we'll stick it up on the ceiling or somewhere in the studio. It's a working art studio. So when you go in there, you see people making art everywhere. And we wanted to draw that, that association um, out of people. Uh, it is an uncomfortable place for people. Art making stopped in junior high for most people. You know, the last time you picked up a paintbrush and painted, you can, I mean, when was that, right? It's been a while. But this, is, but. this, is, uh, this type of uh, product that we drink 
gives us that, it encourages us, it gives us that confidence. I think if you have a few glasses of wine, it's amazing. You pick up a brush and you go to town. It's, it feels good um, to paint. It's a therapy thing. Yeah, well, I got in so much trouble the last painting I did that I decided to not paint anymore. Mm. Anyway, um, <clears throat> the cool thing about it is, is some of you know, I'm in a band called the Vinyl Gypsies, right? So we play all over wine country. We do all kinds of stuff, right? And the nice thing was, is we went there. I took my drummer to Artiste because he had never been there before, right? We walked in. I'm like, all right, I'm getting all geared up. Here, you know, just get the glasses out. This is what the wine's about. I'm trying to show him everything. I turned around. He's just painting a picture. It was so funny. But he has such a good time. Yeah. And that's the point. You guys got to come up here. I, I have told you this a million times. Now you got two places with a great winemaker. This is the place to come. Because you know what? If you think you can find arrows in any of the supermarkets, go right ahead. But I guarantee you're not going to find this there. You got to come visit Brian and his great crew. Right? That's right. Yeah, we only saw them here. So, In fact, the entire vintage and harvest that, that we have every year is sold right out of the front door. So we, uh, we don't wholesale, you know, other than to some restaurants in Santa Barbara County. Okay, so talk to me real quick. Um, do you have a membership at either winery, both mm -hmm. wineries, two at once? How does it work? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we always prefer it when people come and experience Sunstone or experience Artiste because it's really a destination. I mean, you, you can't look at the label online and go, ooh, I want to buy that. When you come to Sunstone and you see the place, that's where you really understand what we're trying to do. There's a, uh, it's a sacred site. I mean, Sunstone is, uh, there's a feeling you have when you come onto the property. Uh, the way that my family's designed the decor makes you feel like you've stepped into the south of France. It doesn't feel Definitely. like you're in California or anywhere for that matter. You feel like you've been transported to a faraway place. So that's really what we are in the business of, is, is creating an experience for people. And to experience wine in a beautiful setting. And so we want people to come in and join our wine club because they like that. They like the experience. They like the people that we have behind the bar, developing relationships with our staff, and other people that, that are, you know, frequent sunstone. At Artiste, it's very similar. I mean, it is, as you said, a very creative space and very uh, energetic, and it's like an art explosion for the eyes. And the smells and tastes of the wines are all part of that. But, um, you know... Artiste is a very, it's a luxury product, it's a beautiful package. People might like it for gift giving purposes, having never been to the studio before. But ultimately, we always want them to come see us right. and join our club. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And here at Sunstone, um, it's, it's a nice sized area. How big is the whole area that you have here? Uh, it's a 55 acre ranch, 25 acres planted to, to vineyards. And then we have three structures, a, a winery, which is where I make the wine. Uh, tasting room, which is the majority of where we have our events, special events and club member events and concerts. And then uh, the villa, where we are now, which is uh, our, our residence, and occasionally we book it for special events as well. Like weddings? Weddings, um, you name it. Bar mitzvahs? Uh, sure, <laughs> sure. Uh, we've had uh, 60th birthdays, we've had anniversaries, um, culinary experiences with chefs, guest chefs coming in from out of town. Oh, that'd be fun. So, and chefs from in town. There's some amazing chefs here locally that we pull from as well. Anything else you want to tell us about these two awesome wineries that you've created? Uh, yeah, I think the most important thing to, to share with everybody is the fact that um, Sunstone's probably one of the longest running wineries in this county, in Santa Barbara, uh, that we're environmentally you know, concerned and that the, the wines we produce are sustainable, sustainably farmed, organic, and that uh, we, we take a lot of pride in what we do, and it's a family business. It's not a big corporation. This is, uh, this is me and my wife, and, and eventually my two boys will be, they stomp grapes and pick grapes every harvest, so it's truly a family business. And same with Artiste, it's small, it's boutique, and I think everyone should support local, seasonal, and organic whenever possible. They're here. Okay, well, you're with the wine dude and buying rice, and we hope to see you guys up here soon.
Definitely come and try these wines because they are awesome. And I'm taking this one. See you, Brian. Oh man, this got out of Artiste. Holy jeez. Man, this stuff is great. Bayan is an amazing winemaker. This stuff is all about blends. And we're here in Los Olivos, enjoying our wine tasting. Our cameraman, Bert, is all wasted, but that's okay. We don't bother, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. But anyway, we had a great time. Thank you to Bayan for spending some time with us and explaining the difference between Artiste and Sunstone. He does both. Again, one is organic and one is organically artistic. There's only one way you're gonna get this kind of wine and that's to come here in Los Livos to Artiste Winery. Wine Dude, signing off. Have a good one, guys.